Hey guys, Corey with Camel. I'm gonna do the install video today for the high fender kit on the Yamaha 700 Tenray. Um, it is a little bit involved. Uh, the one connection point for the brake lines is actually under the gas tank. So we have to remove uh, body panels and move the fuel tank back. We don't need to take the tank off the bike so we don't have to do fuel lines or the electrical connectors on the bottom of the tank for the fuel pump sending unit, etc. cetera. Uh, but we do need to uh, unhook the gas tank from its mounts and slide it back. Um, so there's quite a few parts that need to come off, little fiddly annoying things. So I would have a box or a bin handy to put things to keep them organized. And you might want to snap some photos along the way just as far as uh, being able to get all the bolts back in the right spots. Yamaha, for some reason on this bike, they went from hex to torx to allen and back and forth. and it kind of makes no sense, um, seemingly just random to be honest with you. Uh, one part will have three different bolts on it, uh, three different heads, and they could all be the same. I don't know why they did it. It's Yamaha, I assume they did it for a reason, uh, but I couldn't tell you what it is. So just make sure that you know what's coming off of where, snap some photos as you go uh, for easy reassembly. So I'm not gonna go through uh, taking body panels off of each side uh, because they are the same side to side. So we can kind of um, skip ahead, save you a little bit of time. There's nothing different uh, from left to right. Uh, first thing, you gotta pop the seat off. So if you have the one-piece rally seat, uh, it's obviously just the key. If you have the two-piece seat, uh, it's the key plus the bolts here. And you can set the seat aside. And this is kind of where it starts, what I was mentioning, the different fasteners. Um, this is a five mil Allen here. This is a four mil Allen there. This is a Torx. These are 10 mil. None of this stuff is visible when the seat's on. It's not for aesthetics reasons. I really don't know why, uh, why they switch around like they do, but they do. So just uh, snap that photo before you start. So on my bike, this bolt is actually, the tab is broken behind here, so there's a small zip tie here. Um, but you do need to take this bolt out. It's a four mil Allen. The fairings themselves are fairly easy to get off. It's, it's really nice, it's impressive um, coming from something like an Africa Twin where getting the front body panels off is just a nightmare. There's so many bits and pieces and fiddly little connectors. Um, this is six fasteners per side. They're all the same. This is a, 30, uh, a T30 Torx. Um. And we come to the front, each side has three of these weird twist lock push fastener deals. They're like plastic rivets that you turn to engage, turn to disengage, three per side. You don't even need a ratchet, you can just use the bit. And then you just need to pull the fender. Uh, the bottom has to slide back a little bit. And then you can pull it. Just give it a wiggle. And then we've got the, the signal light connectors here. So there's a flat spot on the top. And then we can set the fairing aside. We're gonna do the same on the other side. And with the fairings off, we can take these bolts out, trim piece into down by the rad. Uh, like I said, yours, this bolt you'll have to take off. It connects these two panels together. Like I said, this one's broken. This plastic pop rivet fastener, just push the center of it in to release. 
and pull it out. And then in order to reset it, you push it all the way back out. You slide it in and then you push the pin so it's flush. And then in farther releases. Once the front trim piece is off, we can take this one off. It's just got a little bit of Velcro on the back. Something to be aware of, the trim pieces that go down here have a shouldered collar on them. So it just sits in there like that if one of these falls out. If it's silver, it's gonna go in that location. If you lose a black one, it's likely gonna go in that location. So with the rear tank mount exposed, we can pop these bolts out. So the four fasteners we just took out of this bracket are a little bit longer than the ones that come down from the top right here. So make sure the long ones go in here. And then we can remove the aluminum bracket. So with all of that removed, we can slide the tank back. So you can just grab it at the back here and lift the back up a little bit and just give it a wiggle. Don't move it back too far. Like I said, we're not removing the um, the fuel line or the wires to the fuel pump or fuel sending unit. So now we can come to the front of the bike and start removing the uh, factory brake lines and rerouting the ABS sensor line, removing the high fender. It's all pretty straightforward. Um, there's some fiddly little clips and when you take the brake lines off there's going to be brake fluid coming out so if you get some small containers to put underneath uh, the brake hoses it will save you from cleaning up a big mess later. So I'm going to start here. This is a clip that holds the ABS uh, sensor wire, wheel speed sensor, and just take a flat blade screwdriver and pop that one open. You can come up here. There's another one. Pop that open. You can set that aside. You won't need it again. Here, and then we can pop this one off. There's going to be two fasteners on your bike um, that you're not going to see in the video here. There's a bracket. Um, the metal bracket itself is here. It's got two 6mm uh, bolts with 10 mil heads. There's a bracket that came down here. Um, it broke uh, one of the many, many times I had the bike uh, apart uh, and back together doing the R&D on the high fender kit. But yours will just have a bracket here and you're just going to undo the bolt here and then split the bracket so you can get the ABS wire apart from the brake line. I'm just gonna snip the zip tie. So these guys are loose. And then this bracket on the bottom here, um, again, M6. And you can set these aside. And then again, there's a plastic clip that's here that mine uh, broke. And of course this bike isn't available in North America yet, so I can't get the replacement part. So it's just zip tied on. So now this brake line is loose. So on the other side of the bike, on the left-hand side, there's another clip like this. I'm just gonna pop that off. And with that done, we can take the low fender off. So these are the clips that hold the lines in. So when you're trying to split them apart, just have a look at the clip here. You've got teeth here and you've got teeth here. So when they lock together, you need to get under both sides at the same time. You need to get, you need to get under from the bottom and over from the top and pull them apart. But we won't need this anymore, so you can set this aside. And now we can undo the brake lines. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you wanna make sure that you have um, a, a bottle or a cup or something underneath here to catch the brake fluid or else you're gonna have a big mess. Uh, the brake lines have been on and off this bike so many times, um, there's currently no fluid in here. So we're not gonna get anything out of here, but make sure you put a cup there. So we're just gonna take this banjo bolt out and this is an M6 Allen. So you can take the banjo bolt out with the washers. We won't be using them again. So 
So you want to put this stuff in a plastic bag. Um, you can tape off the ends or put small plastic bags over them and then zip tie them. Keeps any dirt from getting in the line. These will be in good shape and ready to reuse. So the crossover hose is off and we're left with the main brake hose that goes up to the ABS pump. So this fitting here is the one that we're going after. So it's the one the closest to the front of the bike. It's the first one. Um, it's also the one that only has the silver fitting on it. Everything else is black. Uh, that doesn't mean that your bike might not be black or the 2021s might be black, but currently on this bike, it's the only silver fitting here. And this is also an M6. Uh, it's important you want to make sure that this is clean so you can give this a shot with brake clean um, or, or just make sure that there's no dirt when we take this out. We want to make sure that we don't get any debris uh, in that location. And then you can take a, an air hose or something and blow um, the uh, the extra brake clean or you can sit and let it evaporate or you can wipe it up you want to make sure that there's none pooled here when you take this bolt out you don't want brake clean running into the uh, abs module so again this is an m6 so your kit will come with uh, five new bolts this one we're going to reuse This hose out of here, there's a bracket right here that's holding that hard line on. So if you pull this ahead a little bit, um, the, the tines are here. So if you take needle nose pliers, you can just give those a squeeze and get it pushed through. So this is the, so this is the bracket here. So you just need to squeeze these guys together to get it out through the hole. So with that done, we can wiggle this brake line out. And if you have your bike on the center stand or on a bike lift, it's easiest um, just because you need to be able to have the bars turned the way, all the way to the right to get this guy out. And then just like the other brake hose, you can set this one aside. So we're just going to take a rag just wipe the top of this ABS pump off. Make sure that you're not dropping uh, bits of dirt or debris into the pump when you do it. So the kit comes with three lines. The one that's got uh, the 90 degree on it is the one that comes off the ABS pump. So we've got a banjo bolt. Um, there's a ceiling washer on it. There's a ceiling washer underneath. And then we can tighten this. Uh, they don't take a lot of torque to tighten, so don't over tighten it. Don't get all ham handed with it. So we're going to take our fender mount bracket. Um, and if you watched our intro video, you know that the text is upside down, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, we're going to take two ceiling washers and a banjo bolt and we're going to put them through the brake line that we just took off of the ABS sensor and we're going to start it we're going to start it into the back hole on this bracket And then we've got a hole on each side of this and we're going to put our caliper lines on. We're going to get the bolt started first before we bolt it up to the bottom of the triple. Um, it's, it's difficult to get your fingers in and get the banjo bolt started if you don't. So each of the caliper lines are the same. There's no left, there's no right. Uh, these fittings are a little bit different though. So there's a, a 12 degree bend here on this one and this one is straight. Uh, the straight fitting is going to go to the caliper itself and the one with the slight bend in it is going to go to our mount bracket. 
and when you put it on, it's going to be oriented so that facing forward, the line moves away from the bike. So same thing, caliper bolts, ceiling washer. Like so. Then we're gonna do the same on the other side. And you don't have to tighten these all the way up. We're just getting them started so we don't have to fiddle with them later. There are two fastener packs that come in your kit. And in here, there are four countersunk bolts and they attach the fender mount bracket to the bottom of the triples. And we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on each of these. I have a lot of people ask me um, why we don't include Loctite in the kit. Uh, and if we were including Loctite, it would just be the tiny little um, sample size bottles. And I'm kind of of the opinion that if you ride a motorcycle, especially a, a dirt bike or a adventure bike, you really need to have a decent sized bottle of Loctite. Um, there's so many fasteners on your bike that need to be, uh, that, that should be Loctited just with the vibration and off-road knobby tires and whatnot. Uh, it's just a good idea to have it. It's not that expensive. So these are four mil Allen head, six mil bolts, but a four mil um, Allen to get them installed. We're gonna get all four of them started before we tighten them all the way up. So just be aware of your ABS wire here. It needs to go behind the brake line. If you get all this hooked up um, and get the brakes bled and everything and you've got this wire on the wrong side, uh, you've got a bunch of work to, to rectify that. Uh, so just make sure you do it beforehand. So you're gonna roughly get these brake lines in place. Um, they're almost gonna come out parallel to this bracket. They're just downward slightly and then we can adjust them later, but uh, just get them get them tight so they're not flopping around for now. And they're 14 mil head on the banjo bolts. Now the brake hoses are basically sticking out the front of the bike. We're gonna bring them on the inside of the fork guards between the fork guard and the wheel. And then we've got the calipers down here. So again, banjo bolt, ceiling washer. And get these guys started. You wanna lean the fittings in towards the caliper a little bit, and then you can snug these up. So with that done, we're gonna take this clip here, pull it off. Turn it around. We're gonna take our P clamps here. And this one is going to have the flat side facing you. And the, the big part of the P here facing in. And we're gonna stick this on the brake line. Like so. And then we've got these little guys here. And we're gonna put the bolt through the P-clip into the capture nut that we just installed backwards. So the easiest way to tighten these is actually with a couple of extensions or one long extension from the other side. And you're gonna want this, this P-connector at about a 45 degree angle. We don't want it like that. And we don't want it turned like that. Just kind of right in the middle. So a long extension like this is the best way to do it. And you can just tighten it through the spokes. And just double check the position before you totally tighten it. And 
So I'm good at about a 45 degree angle here. And we're gonna take these large flange button head bolts. And then we've got our covers to go over the holes where the um, low fender attached originally. We're gonna start with the top bolt. Um, on the capture bolts, you don't usually need to use Loctite. Uh, there's usually enough friction through the nut that they don't go anywhere. Uh, I usually, usually add Loctite to everything though. Get that guy started, just make sure that's lined up. You don't need to totally tighten that just yet. Then we're gonna grab another P-clamp, and this one, the hole's gonna be on the outside, the P portion towards the front. Put it around the hose. And then we're going to use the second uh, large flange button head here to hold that together. Again, just a dab of blue. Now these guys, because the hose is coming around the back, um, you don't want them straight vertical. They don't need to be vertical. They can be slightly off center. You don't want them at a 45 or anything like that. Um, just slightly off horizontal is good. Snug that up. Snug that up. And we went with these, uh, the large flange uh, button heads just in case there's any uh, rubbing between that and the brake line that we don't have uh, a wear issue. So same situation with this hose. It's coming out the front. We're gonna tuck it behind the fork guard. We've got it here. Just make sure the ABS sensor line is on the outside of it. And can snug this up. Three mil on either side of that. You don't want it rubbing here and you don't want it rubbing there. And then same situation here, we're gonna pop that clip off, put it on backwards, like so. And then we've got our short guy here, large flange. And again, the bolt hole going towards the front and the bump out going inside. Like so bolt in from the other side. This side is very similar to the other side. The only difference is we have the ABS sensor line to contend with. Um, so when we go to install this one, we want the line on the outside of this. The brake line's on the inside, line's on the outside. It's gonna be the same thing up here, except this grommet uh, gets a clip of its own. Like so. And the brake line gets one, same as the other side. Like so. And then again with the big flange button heads. So now we're gonna take zip ties and we're gonna fasten this along with the brake hose. So we're gonna come up about three or four inches at a zip tie. They don't need to be crazy tight. And then the same distance again.
We're going to come up to this wiring harness here, get a zip tie around it, and, and then attach the ABS wheel speed sensor to it. Again, these don't need to be tight. They're not overly tight. So we want to make sure that we have this hose at about a 45 degree angle. And when you turn the wheels back and forth, or wheel, I should say, that that ABS line isn't being pinched, isn't being pulled, isn't going to interfere with the steering in any way, shape or form. Same thing with the brake hose. Make sure that you've got slack everywhere. And then you can snip that guy. And then just right in here, my finger is around the metal fitting on the banjo. Gonna put one more zip tie here, but make sure that it's loose. Then we're gonna take a zip tie and put it around the ABS line here into the brake line. Just make sure that it's not rubbing on the bolt. It's in a good spot. And we're gonna throw one P-clamp on the ABS line as well. I'm gonna pop this bolt out. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm going to set that one aside and then we've got uh, some of the um, uh, Torx hex flange bolts here so they match everything else that we've put on. So we're going to have the hole towards the back of the bike and the bump out facing out. like so, and then we're gonna swap the um, factory bolt out for the provided one on the other side as well. And then one more up here. Like so. So the fork guards travel up and down with the wheel. So you don't ever have to worry about the location or the, the distance between the tire and the brake hoses changing. They're always going to be in the same spot. This is the way motocross bikes are run. Under suspension travel, these guys bow out forward rather than, rather than backwards. So we're gonna come up here uh, with our 14 mil wrench and just make sure that we've got these banjo bolts tight and in a good spot. So before we do anything else, we're gonna put the bike back together, put the panels on, get the tank back on. So there's some rubber mounts here and there's some pockets on the bottom of the tank. So the tank is gonna slide into there. When you're moving the tank around, you need to make sure that you don't move it too far. Um, the fitting on the bottom of the tank is plastic off of the fuel pump. So if, you, if you're, you're really rough with it, um, you, there's a chance you could break the fuel feeding, which is obviously a problem.
I like this one piece rally seat, but I find it a little bit fiddly to fit. As far as the install on the high fender kit uh, with our parts, that's all there is to do. You still need to bleed the brakes. Um, I'm not going to go through brake bleeding. Uh, the honest truth is if you're not comfortable bleeding brakes, uh, if you don't know how to bleed brakes, you probably should have somebody install this kit for you. Um, bleeding brakes is fairly straightforward, but if you do it wrong and get air bubbles in the, um, in the line somewhere, in the calipers and the master, uh, you can lose your brakes. So if you don't already know how to do brake bleeding, I suggest that you take it to a shop to have that done. Um, there are lots of tutorial videos on YouTube as well if you need a refresher, but it's not something we're gonna go over. There's a few challenges when you go to do the high fender kits on this bike. Um, fender selection is key uh, for two reasons. The first one is the height of these fork guards. On a, a typical uh, motocross bike, when the suspension is fully, um, uh, fully extended, the fork guards usually only come just a hair past the bottom of the fork. These ones are another uh, 50 mil, two inches in that range. So when the suspension fully compresses, uh, these fork guards are coming up very high, very close to the fender. Uh, if you don't mount the fender in the right location or you pick a bad fender, um, you will have the fork guards smash into the fender. The issue is these are fairly brittle plastic. Um, the My low fender has got a couple of cracks in it. One of the tabs broke right off. It's the same material as the fork guards themselves. So if the suspension comes up, you nail the fender, these guys break. Uh, because the brake lines are attached to the fork guards, you run into all, pot all kinds of potential issues um, from you know, the, the chunks of, of plastic uh, getting caught up in here to the brake lines snagging. The other issue with fender selection is the factory rad guard on this bike. Um, when you stick a tape measure in here, you're 25, 30 mil or a little over an inch uh, off of the face of the rad. And the rad is quite far ahead on the bike. It could have been moved back. There's quite a bit of room between the rad and the motor. So I'm not sure why Yamaha mounted it where they did. I'm sure they had a good reason is what it is, uh, but it will limit the fenders that you can run if you want to use the factory plastic rad guard. For about a uh, hundred bucks, you can get the Yamaha GYTR uh, rad guard and you can see how skinny it is. Whereas this one is over an inch away from the rad. Uh, this one is no more than six mil quarter inch. Uh, so you have a lot more options as far as fenders go. So if you wanna run a big full size motocross fender, um, this is about the only way that you're gonna get it in there without any rubbing. So if you want a straight bolt on, no mess around front fender, this is the HRB's uh, Universal Supermoto. It doesn't come drilled, so you do need to drill the holes yourself. Uh, another good option is the UFO Supermoto um, uh, Universal as well. Same thing, the Universal ones, because they're gonna fit on a bunch of different bikes, the holes are not drilled. So that is something that you need to do. In order to make the drilling easier, we've given you a template in your kit. So the width of the holes is 56 millimeters, the length of the holes, 65 mil. So you're gonna take scissors and you're gonna cut this out just so you're not dealing with the whole sheet of paper. Um, you can take a tape measure and measure on your front fender to get the center line. And then you're just gonna line up the arrows on the template with the arrows on your fender on the center line. And then you can take an awl or a center punch and you can mark these holes on your fender. So when you take your fender, it is very, very important that you get the holes as far back on the fender as you can. If you have them too far forward, you run into two problems. One is the fender is potentially rubbing on the rad guard. Uh, the other problem is the cutout here. You wanna, when you take your fender, you wanna set it on the bike and make sure, so you set it in here and you wanna make sure that you have enough room between the fork guards and the fender. So this one has lots, but because of the distance off of the front of the fender, again, we're probably 30, 32 mil, inch and a quarter off the front of the uh, fork. It's really, really important 
that when you have your fender mounted, that if you have it pushed back too far, even if you have enough width here, you don't have enough width here and you're potentially going to hit that. And again, hit that, break these, potentially get caught up with the brake hoses. So it's very, very important that you have these drilled all the way back. So you can see how much room we had to work here or with here. And the holes are as far back as we can get them without running into uh, the, the change in angle here. So then this is the HRB's fender. And originally when we did it, there's some marks on here from the factory, from HRB's, uh, where they expect you to drill it. Again, we had to push them all the way to the back to get everything to clear properly on the bike. Um, so like I said, just, just trim this down, set it on the center line and uh, mark your holes and go from there. So in your kit, there are actually six of these bolts. Two of them are down into the fork guards. Um, and then there's another four here are going to be for mounting the fender. Again, you're gonna to want to put Loctite on here, but because I'm cycling through a few different fenders, I'm not going to do it. But you've got the four threaded holes on the bottom here. I would have bought new fenders to show you the drilling process. Um, unfortunately, the timing is not, <laughs> is not great. Uh, we're just kind of getting into this Corona thing. And unfortunately, I'm um, having a hard time getting some of the parts that I uh, wanted to get supply routes are not, uh, not coming in a reasonable amount of time. So I wasn't able to get a new, uh, new UFO or HUB's fender so that I could drill it for you. Um, so I'll have to make do with what we have. So you can see the cutout here and how far ahead it is compared to the axle tube. So we don't have any issues at all with these fork guards coming up and contacting that. And you can see the clearance we have at the rad here. So no issues there whatsoever. All right, the UFO fender. This one sticks out a little bit uh, more than the others. You can see it kind of comes out a little bit flatter, um, more like a duck bill kind of thing. It is interesting though, when I'm looking at it in person and then I'm looking at it through the viewfinder, uh, it looks different, which is really weird. It looks better in person than it does in pictures or video for some reason. So this is a full-size dirt bike fender. I believe that this is about 2006. It's HRB's uh, YZ fender. Probably can't even see it with the camera. Um, there is probably a 16th of an inch clearance there, millimeter and a half or so. That just clears. So this one actually isn't terrible. I'm not usually a big fan of the full size fenders. I just prefer the shorter ones. Um, but I kind of, kind of don't mind this one. Um, if I was doing something really muddy, uh, there's a race in Southern uh, Washington called uh, 24 hours of starvation Ridge and it's a team relay event. And historically it's very, very muddy. Um, hoping to do that in the fall. And if I do, if it's on this bike, there's a very good chance I would put this fender on because the amount of coverage with this compared to the Supermoto fender is no contest. 
you would stay way cleaner with this fender. So I've pulled the handlebars off and uh, loosened off the pinch bolts here and then back the fork caps out so that I can fully compress the front suspension. Um, and you can see how tight that is. That's not enough clearance uh, with the forks and the fender. So we can't run the fender and fork guards like that. If you do, uh, the, the odds of blowing the fork guards off are incredibly high. If you wanna run the Polysport fender, you have a bit of work to do. Um, you're gonna to wanna to trim about uh, three quarters of an inch or 19 mil off the top of your fork guards. Um, if you're absolutely sold on this fender, it's much easier to use the HRBs or the UFO um, or the, the HRBs uh, full size dirt bike fender rather than the Polysport. Um, but if you, I know a lot of people love this fender, love the look of it. So if you're going to run this one, those are the challenges you face. Make sure you trim them though. If you don't, bad news. So with that info, you should be able to make an informed decision on which fender you want to run. Um, get some pictures up on the uh, on the product page on the website that has uh, the fenders there. Uh, we'll have part numbers with the different colors as well. Like I said, you can run different fenders. You don't have to use the ones that are on our page. However, you need to make sure that they're not going to hit the fork guards. And I know I've said that a half a dozen times. Uh, with this video, but it's super, super important uh, that you do that. It's very easy to trim these down. There's lots of material here. Uh, you can easily take 25 mil off the top of these fork guards. If you do that and run the GYTR rad guard, it opens up a ton of possibilities for fenders. In case you missed the intro video, um, all the parts came in, opened the boxes, super thrilled. Yay, the new parts are here, super cool. Pick it up, look at it, go, wait a minute. Flip it over, flip it over. Yeah, so uh, the first batch of these, the text is all upside down on them, which is why they're on the website at 179 right now instead of the regular price of 199. Um, so it's a bit of a limited edition kind of thing. We did include a decal in your kit, a little sticker here that has the text going the right direction and it is the exact same size as the front of the fender mount. So uh, it's easier to put this on before the fender's on if you wanna put it on at all. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and do that. So I know some of you will be curious what these threaded holes in the front of this are for. Uh, it's just kind of uh, setting this up for a light mount in the future. Uh, when we designed it, I just wanted to make sure that we had somewhere to, to mount a bracket to get some lights beside the fender. So we've got the text there and it is exactly the same size. So just be careful lining it up. Like, like so. So we're all sorted out with the upside down text now. So that wraps up our install for the High Fender Kit on the Yamaha 710 Ray. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, info at camel-adv. Thanks for watching.